Straight to it as always. First up we have global shadow quality. This affects the quality of shadows. We'll need to freeze frame the benchmark here to see the differences. We see the jagged shadow line get better from very low to medium with almost no improvement on high. During motion it's quite hard to notice these differences. Another pause here and we notice considerably finer shadow details on the leaves between low and medium. Moving on, I want to point out that on very low, some shadows are missing completely. This mostly only applies to power lines and a few odd fences and railings. What is very surprising in this benchmark is that the FPS drop is really only significant going from medium to high. The most important shadows are going to be those of enemy players, so let's cover that quickly as well. So we notice the same improvement as before, but I specifically chose this scene because here we can see the difference between medium and high. Since the FPS drop is substantially more from medium to high, and gives us a very tiny improvement, it seems obvious that medium will be the best choice here. We'll recommend medium for this one to save 3% FPS while retaining near perfect global shadows. Moving to the second setting, we have model and texture detail. This one is more subtle than you'd expect. There are differences on this wall texture here, but at this distance it's very hard to make them out. If we're a little closer, the differences become more noticeable. And yes, the texture upgrades really are this minor. I should mention, not all textures have this minor improvement, such as we see here. In this scene, all of the buildings are also the same. But let's face it, the textures we really care about are actually the weapon skins. High and medium look exactly the same. However, there is a clear improvement from the blurriness we see on the low setting. And considering how much some weapon skins cost, well your skins, mine not so much. But in any case, they cost money, so expensive blurry textures just won't do. There is no texture differences for character models. So although the wall texture upgrades aren't particularly impressive, the drop reflects that in these benchmarks with no noticeable difference. This is because rendering higher res textures isn't more GPU intensive on modern video cards, and it simply comes down to having enough VRAM to load them. Given you have enough VRAM, there will be no performance hit to our FPS, so it's a solid recommendation for the high setting. However, if you have less than 3 or 4 GB of VRAM, and you are unsure if it's enough for your setup, you can always just bring up Task Manager and see how much of your VRAM you are using. Moving down the list we have Texture Streaming. This manages how high res texture loading is managed. It's actually meant to boost performance on low end systems with low video and system RAM by deferring the loading of those high res textures until they're needed. Speaking of lower end systems, if you are running a mechanical drive instead of an SSD, you will also likely notice textures load in as you move around the map with this setting on. For medium and high end systems, texture streaming actually has no effect. This is because the VRAM is large enough that all of the high res textures will already be loaded without the need for deferral. Of course, given our test bench setup here, as expected, we see no performance impact and also no significant difference in VRAM memory used. My recommendation here is very simple. If your system is low end enough that enabling the setting actually improves performance, then you shouldn't be running high res textures in the first place. The texture upgrades are barely noticeable and you'd be losing performance for them. On such lower end systems with low VRAM, you'll gain a big boost by just turning down those subtle texture details and disabling texture streaming. We strongly recommend setting this one to disabled because it'll have no effect on medium and high end graphic cards. And having it disabled will also help considerably on lower end hardware. Hopping one more down we have Effect Detail. There is a lot of misinformation about this one online, but we can easily correct all of that. First off, be aware that the high setting here only works if shader detail is also set to high or very high. Alright, let's start off with smokes. Posts such as this one claiming effect detail makes it easier to see through the edges of smokes are very common, but also not true. The volume and shape of smokes in CSGO are random. Throwing two identical smokes is impossible. Trust me, I wasted too much time trying. In this post here, he happened to get more smoke in the bottom right corner on high, but less smoke in the top right corner. This is completely by chance. 
running our own test on the smoke, you'll notice the thickness at the edges of the smoke is simply due to the random three-dimensional volume of the smoke. Taking a look at grenades, I want you to pay attention to the smoke taking longer to dissipate after the explosion. Notice that extra second it takes for the smoke to clear on the high setting. That is consistent and happens every time. However, the difference is much more interesting when we test this on an incendiary or a Molotov. It is much easier to see through the smoke on high during the entire duration of the fire. We will run it a couple of times here. It's also worth having a look at the FPS because the FPS drop from low to high here is a hefty 10%. This is also a good time to compare effect detail with the next setting called shader detail because they actually affect each other. Let's start with the Molotov on effect low and we should notice no difference. Running it again on medium, we still notice no difference. Running it a third time on high, we notice that on shader high and very high, the smoke is more spread out and easy to see through. This is important to know because it's an advantage we can only achieve if both of these settings are set to high or very high. Effect detail also has an effect on the environment visuals. FPS impact remains the same, however the high setting provides additional objects. These objects are placed strategically to not block line of vision of an enemy as far as I could find. If you find any please let me know in the comment section below as I do update the video description for corrections and to keep up with game updates. I also plan to do update videos or remake the entire video once there are significant changes. Back on the settings page, we have to make a decision. The ability to see through incendiaries and molotovs better than your opponent is a huge advantage, even if grenade smoke lasts a half second longer. So the recommendation here will be high, however the 10% FPS drop here is significant. So if your FPS is low or you're not hitting your monitor's refresh rate, this would be a good setting to save a lot of frames on. Moving on, we have shader detail. This adjusts the complexity of shader algorithms. If this setting is set to anything below high, then the high setting in the above effect details will automatically be disabled, meaning you will lose the ability to see through Molotov smoke and the additional cosmetic objects. All right, let's start off with the annoying glitch with this setting. Most pipes have this issue on low and medium where their texture flickers when firing a weapon. On high, this glitch is fixed. High is also where we start to see improved shader algorithms be used on additional light sources. On very high, the light looks even better and we have the additional object on the floor. These improved lighting algorithms do not actually affect enemy players, but it can light up dark corners behind them. I should also mention that these shader details do not affect global illumination. They only affect some select indoor light sources. Here we see an additional light source light up our knife. However, most indoor lights won't be affected by the improved shader, but at least the additional objects are rather plentiful. The FPS impact here varies depending on the environment and if there are indoor lights that take advantage of the higher detail shader algorithms. Recommendation here will be a setting of high or very high depending on whether you want the additional objects. Anything lower than high and you will lose the ability to see through molotovs and incendiaries, which is quite a disadvantage. Besides, the FPS impact for this one isn't big. On to the next setting we have boost player contrast. This setting is a must have. It makes it easier to see enemy players in certain locations by increasing the contrast between them and their background. Notice how the player in the background is easier to see since the background behind him is brighter 
However, the effect is far diminished on the two closer players. Here, we see this effect has nothing to do with distance, as the closest player is easier to see this time. This setting simply increases the contrast between the player and his background. In most scenarios, this setting will make no noticeable difference because the contrast between players and their background is already high, as seen here. We take a hit of 3% FPS so we can much more easily see enemies hiding in the dark. That's a must in my books, so a recommendation to set this onto enabled. Up next is multi-core rendering. Contrary to popular belief, this does not limit your CPU to only one core. But it may as well have, because it is true that it severely limits CSGO's access to your CPU threads. As an added side bonus, even the GPU gets a hefty slash in core frequency. The FPS impact here will depend on your particular CPU and how many cores and threads you have, but you can expect about a 50% reduction in frames if you turn this setting off. You may be wondering why this setting exists. Well, for some older CPUs, this could fix particular compatibility issues, but for most modern hardware, this option is simply used to improve performance of background applications. Simply put, for the vast majority of players, turning the setting off will degrade performance by a whopping 50% or more. Ultimately, I strongly recommend turning this on and taking full advantage of your hardware for CSGO. Continuing down the list is multi-sampling anti-aliasing mode, also known as MSAA. This makes jagged edges much more smooth. It's very noticeable when the setting is set to none. When moving, it's particularly noticeable since these jagged edges start to have a visual ripple-like effect. Even 8x cannot fully remove this effect, but it makes a massive visual improvement. These side buildings, that antenna, and those window blinds are a great example. What is really impressive here though is that there is no FPS impact for this setting thanks to great optimization. This is the kind of setting I like with great visual improvement and no performance impact. Definitely set this one to 8x. I do want to mention to be thorough that anti-aliasing modes will all introduce some level of blur to the pixels on the edges of textures. In CSGO, it's quite hard to notice this as it's well implemented, but know that it's not uncommon for pro players to turn anti-aliasing off for a tiny slither of a visual advantage while greatly sacrificing the look of the game. I'd compare it to running 4x3 stretched, although that gives a more substantial competitive advantage, but also at the cost of greatly reduced graphics. In all honesty though, unless you are a pro player or on the verge of being pro in CSGO, you should set this one to 8x. Moving on, we have FXAA anti-aliasing, which is not working. It has been several months now since this setting has stopped working. Forcing the setting on goes well beyond just editing an ini file, so I don't recommend it. This setting won't merit a benchmark until Valve fixes it for everyone. But hit that sub button and I will have an update video once this setting is fixed. Speaking of broken settings, motion blur is also not currently working. In the past, this setting created a minor blur when the mouse was moved very fast, such as when you did a flick shot or a 180. We're going to skip analyzing and benchmarking this setting for now since it's not actually working. There is a couple of interesting things to point out about it, but I'll cover it once a future patch fixes it. Alright, getting back on track here, we have texture filtering mode. This is the same as anisotropic filtering in most games. It determines the distance and steepness of angle at which ground textures are rendered to full resolution. In plain English, it means this is how far ground textures are rendered to full resolution. As a result, this means you'll notice some textures being rendered to full res as you're walking around the map. Now, unlike most games, this setting in CSGO not only affects ground textures, but also some wall textures. What's really most important here is the FPS benchmarks that show zero significant differences for turning this up. We will set this one to 16x because we love improved visuals with no performance impact. Up next is vertical sync. This setting will lock your max frame rate to that of your monitor. There is no reason for you to cap your frame rate. The only time you should turn V-Sync on is if you use G-Sync, FreeSync, or if you're experiencing screen tearing. In the process of eliminating screen tearing, it will also introduce a noticeable input lag. 
Keep in mind, the higher your FPS, the lower your input lag. This remains true if you have an insanely high FPS well beyond your monitor's refresh rate. Next up, motion blur. We've already covered it's broken, much like the ranking system. Just kidding, the rank system is perfect. Anyway, should we use Uber shaders? This is complicated and I'd like to try and make it simple. It's just a different method of compiling shaders with the intent to eliminate lag, stutter or hitching. Think of these shaders as various programs, each with a different algorithm used to render a certain type of material or a type of light. When set to disabled, the game engine will use many different types of shaders, each to render a various material or various lighting effects. The stuttering is caused by the system's inability to switch between so many shaders quick enough since each one runs on a separate pipeline. When you enable Uber shaders, the game engine will combine many of the materials and lighting shaders into a single Uber shader pipeline. It's a more complex Uber shader pipeline with many dynamic branches to handle many shader types. Unfortunately, due to the more complex nature of an Uber shader, it can have a performance impact depending on the game as well as your video card's architecture. The performance benchmark here gives us a good idea of what to expect when enabling this on modern GPUs. However, keep in mind on old GPUs, you can expect a performance drop here. How old? Well, at least a few generations to notice in CSGO. Recommendation here will be enabled since there is no FPS drop and this setting is designed to reduce hitching and stuttering. Hit that sub button if you learned anything here today. I make similar videos for many games, so check those out. Subbing helps me keep making videos, but if you share this video with your friends, that would be amazing. Thank you and happy fragging.